In the previous couple of KiCad videos, we looked at uh, finding parts on digikey.com, a couple of connectors. Uh, we created footprints for them, or we didn't create footprints, we downloaded footprints for them and symbols and build up a little schematic. Th this is a modification of that schematic. I want to kind of take this a little further, address one of the issues we had in a previous video where it was flagging really ground at that point uh, in, the deep, in the electrical rules check. And so I've taken that schematic and I've modified the, the symbols for both of these to bring the shields down to the bottom just because I prefer that. And I've added a couple of logic gates here, a couple of NAND gates. Again, this is a very convoluted example. It's not meant to do anything in the real world. Uh, it's ignoring the actual pinouts of these connectors. This is a USB connector and this is a PS2 connector. I'm ignoring the standard pinouts. I'm just creating an example here to play with. So if we take this schematic and we go ahead and perform an electrical rules check and we run it, we, we get these two messages here, pin connected to other pins but not driven by any pin. And if we drill into this one, we find this guy right here where it's complaining and we find this guy right here where it's complaining. So what can we do to address this? Uh, the issue here is I need to add the power flag to these two guys to, to basically tell the ERC that the power is coming from, from off the board. Don't worry about flagging these. And to do that we go into the power symbols. We add a power symbol. Uh, and we open up power symbols. And if we scroll down, what you'll find in here is there's the plus five that I used. There's the ground that I used, but deeper down in here is power flag. And we need to add a couple of power flags. So we'll add a power flag over here. And we just took this ground net and we said it, it comes from off the board. So don't worry about uh, it, the fact that it's not driven. And if we take a second power flag, we copy this one. I'm going to rotate it just so it wires up here a little bit easier. And we take that power flag and hook it to this power rail. We've again told the system that this is powered off board, don't worry about it. If we go in now and do the electrical rules check, those two error messages go away. So again, because I'm not happy with the layout at the moment, I'm going to move these. A little further over here, I'm going to move him. Oops. Delete that little line segment. Get this wired back up. And again, the design rule check should be clean, and it is. So the second issue in this layout is that I've dropped these two NAND gates on here, but I haven't powered them. I've got no power being brought to them. Uh, and I'm surprised that the... Uh, Electrical rules check isn't flagging that. So we need to actually get power to these. And we do that by going into the symbols. We're going to add a symbol. Let me search for the 74 LS100 that those are. And if we look, there's actually five different symbols with this one package. This is a 14 pin package and it's got five different symbols involved. And there, there's the symbol on pins 1, 2, and 3. There's the symbol on pins 4, 5, and 6, but I should add these other symbols in. So there's pins 8, 9, and 10. We'll drop this over here someplace. We need to add the symbol for pins 11, 12, and 13. And finally, we need to add what's called unity here, and that is the ground and VCC, excuse me, and VCC connections. So we'll drop that over here. Uh, I'm going to do as I always do because it bugs me. You know, you, your preferences are your preferences. Uh, I like as much as I can to keep these inside of the packages. I'm going to go ahead and add a wire for ground. You get a ground to that 74 LS100. Let's go ahead and copy. VCC and wire that up. And now, if we run the, the electrical rules check, we're still going to have issues here at this point. Oh, A, we're not annotated. 
So until we annotate all the devices, we can't actually run an electrical rules check. And that's because these devices don't have a, a U number associated with them. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the default annotation and make sure that I have U1A, U1B, U1C, U1D, and U1E. So I have accounted for all 14 pins in that 14 pin package that is the NAND gate. Now if we run the electrical rules check, we're going to get a bunch of flags saying, hey, these pins aren't connected to anything. You need to do something about that. And with floating inputs, it's really best to tie those to VCC or ground. I'm just going to tie these all to ground. If these pins are left floating, uh, you can the part can oscillate in certain conditions because the pin's floating. It does get pulled high inside of the, the, the IC itself at time, you know, but you can get weird behavior. Uh, it's just best to actually, you know, tie those someplace. Uh, I'm going to put no connects, the blue X's, on these two guys here. Often in schematics, what you'll see is a pull-up resistor, and these are both pulled up via a pull-up resistor. I'm not going to do that here. But let's go ahead and run the electrical rules check again. And we should get a clean schematic now. So the real gotcha here was the fact that I dropped these NAND gates in but didn't bring in power to them and they, those pins would have just ultimately been left floating uh, not connected any place when I picked the uh, 14 pin uh, uh, pad layout on the board so we've now accounted for everything we can go ahead and save this we, we're going to need to associate a package to these you should know how to do this I think this might give me some error messages here. It didn't this time, which is good. Oh, I've already got a, a, the association done. So that 7400 has already been associated to a DIP 14. So we're really clean there. We can go in and generate our net list. And we'll just save over the top of the old one. So now that we have everything cleaned up in the schematic, we've generated, we, we've annotated everybody, we've generated the net list. Let's go ahead and look at the printed circuit board designer and we've got the board we laid out before and we know we're going to be adding a package to this uh, that you know the 14 pin dip and let's just go ahead and do that if we import the net list and update the printed circuit board we get that uh, 74 LS 100 that we added so let's go ahead and move it off the board for now and we'll zoom in here on the board and I'm going to go in on the board I'm going to select everything and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to select filter selection and I'm not going to include footprints I'm going to include tracks and vias and so what I'm going to do here because I'm doing the filter select is I'm going to delete the tracks and the vias and the zones on the board all in one sweep and if I delete now wherever delete is well just oh. always got to be difficult okay we've got the same selection we had before I'm just gonna hit the delete key and by that I was able to remove all the copper from the board but leave the footprints in place I'm gonna go ahead and remove the board outline as well I'm just hovering over each line segment and hitting the delete key Sometimes it helps to zoom in. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm going to move this guy. Oops. To select him, actually move. And I'm going to rotate him here and try to get him in some way where the rat's nest doesn't look too horrible. Although it looks pretty horrible. And I keep doing that. him a little better centered up actually we can do this we can do a line distribute uh, aligned middle nope center there it is aligned to center and that got everybody centered here 
that way. So anyhow, uh, it was just a, a, a quick tip there to be able to go in and, and delete everything or delete selected objects, you know, out of a board we'd rendered before. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and I think we'll wrap this video up here and we'll talk soon.